Cap 7 Tip of the Week. Hello, I'm Bradley Schumacher, two-time Olympic gold medalist and co-founder of Cap 7 International. Today we often focus uh, on timeout plays from the offensive perspective, but many times a team calls a timeout for a situation, so they need a goal, for instance. So what I like to think about when another team calls a timeout is how do I influence what they're doing and what ways can I do it to kill their timeout? Okay, so a lot of people say, oh, it's a timeout, you know, we got to play great defense, shut it down, so on and so forth. But we can position ourselves before the ball even goes into play to really change what the other team is doing, okay? And, uh, you know, author credit on this one goes to Wolf Weigo and, uh, my, you know, my partner in Cap 7, but he did show me this play, um, and it's really quite fantastic. So I'm going to move the defensive players into position, okay, just like we would do normally. We're fronting two meters. Okay. And I, le I left the forward position open, okay, specifically for a reason is this player is going to go on the outside, okay? We're going to go on the outside, okay? And as, the, as this happens, right, so when you're going into the pool, you start like here, whatever, and then as soon as the referee starts to walk to address the, the thing, this person slides out. And so when you see the distance, the distance is close enough that I can get to the player, but I'm trying to sucker this four player to follow me, okay? Because what's going to happen? The coach on the other bench is going to be looking at this like right away, you know, and if it were the NBA, they'd call another timeout, like going, what the heck are they doing? Let's look at this, hold on, you know, but obviously we don't have enough timeouts and water polo to be able to do this. So what they're going to do, and I guarantee it, on the other team, the coach is going to go, Cover up, cover up. And they're going to tell this person to try to swim to the outside. Okay? So the second the ball goes in the goal and they start doing that, this person keeps suckering the defense out as far as they can. As soon as the ball goes to the goalie, or if this person keeps coming in here like this, right? As soon as that happens, right? The goal, let's say the goalie released the ball to here like this. And this is like now eight or nine or ten meters. Jump to here. Jump to here, jump to here, oh, excuse me. This person comes, jumps into the front and then comes back out, waiting for this person to attack in. So if you think about it and if you see it in a real-time movement, the panic that ensues from doing this typically kills their entire timeout play. So when you're thinking about this, it's really about the players understanding kind of your sweet spots for the attack, right? So... At what point do we say, okay, look, you're way too far away. We can just throw the ball here. This person can take five fakes and shoot, right? We don't want that. If the player comes here and the ball comes right to them and they start going forward, we stay on defense behind, okay? We let the person go. We don't reach for the ball. We let them go. We let them go. We let them go. And hopefully they keep advancing in, and then we jump here and then switch here. And hopefully in this situation – as I'm jumping, this person puts up a really low percentage shot, and we're gone. Two on one the other way. Okay? But what I'll tell you is when you're thinking about the timeout play, when you look at it from an offensive perspective, think about how you can kill the, the, uh, somebody's timeout play by merely setting up in a way that creates and forces them to do something different to change their play up front. That's just one way to kill a timeout. 